Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. Digital Foundry this morning kind of did a deep dive on Mark Cerny's PlayStation 5 presentation. They spoke with Mark Cerny himself, and we have a little bit more clarity on some of the PlayStation 5 capabilities. Now, like usual, I'll leave a link in the description down below so you guys can check it out for yourself. I do recommend that you read their article or watch their video. They go into a lot of details there, and I can't get into everything today. I really want to concentrate on the clocks of the PlayStation 5. Now, this has been contention for quite some time. A lot of gamers somehow think that a 36 CU GPU is going to beat a 54 CU GPU, even if the 36 CU GPU is clocked higher. Now, that's not the case. We've been saying this for quite some time and digital foundry they kind of put it all out there so you guys can see it for yourself now really after the information that's out there now it's really up to you guys what you want to believe but i can honestly say that the playstation 5 will be a fantastic machine nonetheless it's less powerful than the xbox series x now mark cerny did talk about the cpu and the gpu and he said to digital foundry that the cpu and gpu each have a power budget and of course the gpu power budget is the larger of the two if the cpu doesn't use its power budget for example it's capped at 3.5 gig Gigahertz, then the unused portion of the budget goes to the GPU. That's what AMD calls smart shift. There's enough power that both the CPU and GPU can potentially run at their limits at 3.5 gigahertz and at 2.23 gigahertz on the GPU. It isn't the case that developers has to choose to run one of them slower. Now, this is where I'm going to call nonsense. I do think that they will have to run one of them slower, just the way that Smart Shift works. 3.5 gigahertz and 2.23 gigahertz will not be sustainable at the same time. They just won't be. And even Digital Foundry said in their video or in their article, if you read it, that the clocks will be variable. AMD Zen 2 CPU cores are combined with an RDNA 2 based GPU. 36 compute units there with a variable clock speed that tops out at 2.23 gigahertz. CPU max is at 3.5 gigahertz. So yes, the boost clock. I still think this needs some measure of explanation. They said that explicitly in their video that they will not be locked at those clocks all the time, that they will drop. Now they even took it a step further by speaking to developers that are actually creating games on Sony's next generation PlayStation 5 system. For SOC, there's a set limit there tied to the thermal dissipation capabilities of the cooler, the cooler that we haven't seen yet. Right, so those power budgets set the clock speed, 3.5 gigahertz, 2.23 gigahertz. The interesting thing here is that from a user side perspective, based on the precedents set by Ryzen 3000 and Navi in the PC space, the GPU clock looks incredibly high, while the CPU kind of low. Well, this is actually uh, one of the breakthroughs that Sony has made here. The firm has identified clocks that create pretty much equal thermal density across the SoC, meaning that, as Mark Cerny told me, they're equivalently easy or difficult to call. So look, it's been a while since Mark's presentation and developers are now a little more open with us here at Digital Foundry about how they are using the PS5. More than one developer has told us that they are running the CPU throttle back allowing for excess power to pour into the GPU to ensure a consistently locked 2.23 gigahertz. Now the developers said to Digital Foundry that their current PlayStation 5 work sees them throttling back the CPU in order to ensure a sustained 2.23 gigahertz on the clock for the graphics core. Once again, this is not 3.5 gigahertz on the CPU and 2.23 gigahertz on the GPU at the same time. These are developers creating games for the PlayStation 5 and they're having to choose either having a faster GPU or faster CPU. Now, I think this is a case once again of Mark Cerny kind of stretching the truth a little bit. Now, he did this with the PlayStation 4 Pro with the eight teraflops of theoretical performance with half float or FP16 calculations, rapid pack math, and we all know how that turned out. It didn't give any type of benefit to the PlayStation 4 Pro over the Xbox One X, and I think they're at it again. Now, Digital Foundry also did some tests on a Radeon Navi 5700 and 5700 XT. Now, that has the same CU count as the PlayStation 5. It also has the same bandwidth. Now, when they overclocked that card compared to the 5700 XT, there really wasn't that much benefits to overclocking it. In fact, it 
kind of was a detriment to the GPU. Now they cover all of this in their video, in their article. You don't have to take my word for it. You can click the link in the description down below, check it out for yourself and come back here and comment on what you think about it. But the bottom line is that the PlayStation 5 is less capable than the Xbox Series X. A lot of gamers seem to be in denial that the Xbox Series X is just more powerful than the PlayStation 5. The extra speed that the PlayStation 5 has from its SSD is not going to translate to a better GPU, to a better CPU, to better ray tracing. What it's really going to result in is faster load times and perhaps a further draw distance in certain open world games. It's not going to produce better looking graphics. Yet we have a lot of gamers still hanging on to the fact that the PlayStation 5's faster SSD will somehow produce better looking graphics on Sony's PlayStation 5. Now I don't think it will, I think Sony has a capable system with the PlayStation 5, I think their first party exclusives will look amazing on the system, but the matter of the fact is that the Xbox Series X is just a more capable system. I really think that Mark Cerny is playing a game of smoke and mirrors here with us. I don't think that 2.23 gigahertz is going to be sustained all the time and we're already seeing in motion from developers creating games for the PlayStation 5 that the 3.5 on the CPU and 2.23 gigahertz on the GPU are not being obtained at the same time. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think about this. Do you think it's a lot of smoke and mirrors from Sony or do you think that Sony will be capable of maintaining 3.5 on the CPU and 2.23 gigahertz on the GPU at the same time consistently in the PlayStation 5? Let me know in the comment section down below and like I usually say, please like, share and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys on the next one.